Wilson Farming is um, Harry and Lynn Wilson. The next generation is Ian and Keith. I'm taking more and more on the contracting side. I'll be the one that organises the men and organises where they're going and liaises with the farmer and things. Uh, my role here is looking after Wilson Farms and that is predominantly now Miss Campus. We eat, sleep, breathe Miss Campus. I see the business growing. I see the hire side growing a lot. Uh, we've had a lot of inquiries on hire. We've got 30 choppers in the current fleet at the moment. We have bought um, 23 John Deere tractors for 2012. The stress comes in, the biggest problem comes in is, and it's all weather related. If we get such a backlog, it's our lands to the pump. We have 1,900 acres to pick up, so we have a big week ahead of us. With a bit of luck with these machines and some good operators, we should be able to clear everything up we need to. Call the boys, gonna go out and make some noise. Been working all day and I just got paid. You best believe it's time to play. So I turn up that country song. Oh yeah, it won't be long till I'm back on that road again. Weaving through traffic like a madman. Ain't nothing gonna stop me now. I'm four beers in and I'm on the brow. Gonna hit that bar across town. Try and find a woman that's gonna be down. Till then I got my speakers loud. Crank and hang drinking louder than a loud. Wow, our well, wee series is going well at this stage, folks, and really thank you for um, the attention that you've been given. It's good to see that people are enjoying um, listening back to the reasons and how the business has grown on the video production front uh, throughout the last 10 years uh, at Grassmill. The next DVD, or should I say series of DVDs, coming off the back of Two Legends and a Donkey, what a high. You know, for, for the people they loved it, the tractors were, they turned into icons. I mean, we were getting requested to take them absolutely everywhere. We had to go and invest in our first sort of low loader trailer to move them about. We had taken them to some major shows and the interest in those tractors were just phenomenal. But we couldn't make DVDs like that every time. It just wasn't going to work. I wanted to show the world that we could Go and produce a documentary style series, show that we could do it, show that the grassmen had the ability to do it, had the skills to do it, and the desire to do it. And we really didn't know where to go or who to speak to. Um, and actually, the inspiration for this one came from a phone call with an ex-employer of mine. Uh, basically said, you need to go and speak to wee Harry. Who's wee Harry? Harry Wilson. Who's wee Harry Wilson? We Harry Wilson just happens to be um, the largest single owner of foragers in the whole of the UK and Ireland, if not the Northern Hemisphere or something like that. At the time, we knew, but We Harry owns in the region of 30 self-propelled foragers. Huh? This is the information coming to me. What? Who? What? 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 <laughs> so, as you can imagine, a lot of information was done very fast. Phone calls were made, appointments were set up. And I remember the first day we met Harry. 
What a guy. We met Harry, and Harry was this wee businessman from Preston, and I was nervous. And I was a salesman. I was a salesman through and through. I had no fear in anything, that's the truth. And I was nervous about meeting Harry. Because I drove into the yard and seen harvester after harvester after harvester after harvester after harvester and after harvester. And then tractor after tractor after tractor after tractor. After. You, you get in the picture. So we had seen guys running harvesters. We'd seen guys running, you know, some guys running two harvesters. And then we met Harry. And we had a meeting with Harry. We had a chat with Harry. We basically told Harry where we were and what we were trying to achieve. That we had been very successful within the UK and Ireland up until then, but we wanted to go to the next level. We wanted to come into a business like Harry's that uh, is completely different. They run with this crop called Miscanthus. They hire harvesters to other contractors, and then they run their own contracting for them. It was big, big, big differences in what they do and that we we at that time seen a three-part series one based on his sort of miscanthus and his other activities one based on guys that he hires harvesters to and then one based on his own fleet that that was the plan and uh, we spoke to harry and we were just unsure what what way we could make it all work but as time passed i'd like to say at this stage harry and i became quite close um, I like to think so. I like to think we became very close because I, I just idolised him. <laughs> totally and utterly idolised this man. You still make time for the workshop. What is the appeal for you towards that side of the job? I would say my interest in engineering, my determination to do the jobs that can't be done. If anybody says to me, can't do that, I'll say, give it here. This morning, Jim had done a bit of lead work on a, a drive shaft. We wanted to put it into a, a six prime PTO drive in a gearbox. And he had turned this shaft down and pressed it together, ready for welding on last night, uh, which I welded up, thinking he'd got it right. But we're running about 20 to 25 thou out. We get on like an house on fire, but I just like to put one on him now and then. <laughs> I think one of the Wilson's qualities is getting a machine, altering it, adapting it and making it work. How did it feel when you were nominated for Contractor of the Year 2010? I didn't really feel uh, worthy of such honour and I just feel that it was in recognition of my ambition my love for my job and got to remember it wasn't just me it was me my wife and our team and i appreciate it greatly and cherish the honor of winning it it was fantastic uh, but a lot was down to my wife and our team in the 70s when we started in foraging, there was nobody else doing forage harvesting contracting. So anybody who wanted grass cutting on contract, we, had, we could go and do it. They were waiting for us, often waiting for us for seven, ten days, where that wouldn't happen today. Nobody worked for nobody. Everybody wanted doing quicker. Timeliness is very important. So that is how we see our business going now, uh, looking at high capacity machines. And I think there's gonna be a lot of opportunities for us to develop our business further for hiring machines. We, we realized that we had to do something back in the late 70s, early 80s. We had three self-propelled foragers in the early 80s. And we found that um, after September, there was nothing for them to do. And we looked and, and seriously uh, looked at the market for maize in the south of England. And that is what, uh, where we started with the air. And from there, 
we have asked for grass hires and full, full season contract. slight problem on the crown, it was nothing major, just some wires had come out the back of a plug, but he brought the machine to a stop. We had to have that machine going, obviously, for the next morning. Harry himself arrived about eight o'clock at night, very hands-on, mucked in with a local engineer and myself. The machine was stripped down, the, the, the part and the plug taken off, rewired, back together, and the machine ready to go for the morning. No quibble, no mess, you know, that's Harry. You can literally count on Harry. We we'll have an 870 and we also hire in a, a class 940 as well. Because we've had a, a good long standing relationship with Harry and things have went well over the years. Couldn't have really fault, he's very professional, does everything you could ask for him. Foragers are well serviced, maintained. I still think, uh, you know, it's definitely cost effective in this current climate, you know, with running costs. And Harry keeps them very fresh, keeps them young. Certainly we'll clock up quite a few hours in them, but you know, if they're not working, they're not earning. The focus on this farm is dairy. We try to run the farm as a business. Quality silage is so important to this business being successful. With every extra litre of milk from forage worth 100,000 plus. We prefer to make our own silage because I like to be in control of my own destiny if I can. And that's why we hire a chopper from Harry Wills. I'm hiring the chopper off Harry at the moment. These are my customers and what we do, we have a, we have a group of farmers that um, plug together with a ruck of trailers. And I just supply the chopper, a rake and whatever else they need to fill the gap. And they just um, do everything else. And this is the third season and um, it's, work, it's working very well. Woo-hoo!
Why do you need a radio when you can listen to that? We spent a long time at Wilson's and Harry was so kind to us at that time. He, he had his offices and he cleaned out an office and put a couple of beds in it and John and I were able to stay on site, which was a massive, massive help to us whenever we went over because we're still working jobs, we're still trying to get this up and running and that's what we did and you know what I'm going to tell you? It was worth it because when you could go over there for a few days, you really got into the detail of what was happening. The first DVD, I suppose, in the Wilsons was, I know it's going to sound a wee bit corny for us, really, because it's not us, but it's part one, part two, part three, part four. It is basically what we, we, what we set out to do, but Wilsons had some different machines and, and so much variety that we ended up going into four DVDs. In hindsight, we should have kept it to three. That's my personal opinion. But that's hindsight. That's the beautiful thing about business. You're learning, you're moving forward and you're, you're understanding. But the cover on the very first DVD, and probably maybe you can't see it, but you just set, we set that up. It took ages to move every... Um, harvester that they had, they didn't even have them all at HQ that day and we were moving these harvesters by any place. Wilson Farman also had a cougar, a class cougar. We had never seen anything like this before. It was just an animal. 50 foot mown machine. Unbelievable. And then, lo and behold, we get introduced to a Crone 1100. We had seen a 650, which blew us away. We had seen a 700, which for all intents and purposes, um, horsepower performance-wise, we felt was on a par with a with the 650. Now we've seen an 1100. Oh my goodness, folks. <laughs> it was just different league. What that machine could do. I had was Tony that was driving the 1100, felled all the grass to the wrong side, out the right hand side. I don't know why he did that and didn't do it the proper way. I mean it was doing my head in. I couldn't even get it understand. It just didn't look right. You took a picture and you're like everything's the wrong way around. <laughs> but little did I know the debates that we would start and get involved in over the years based on this uh, model of filling over to the right hand side and 
We met James Seaton, who worked for Wilson's, who hired Harvester from Wilson's, but also worked in the Miscanthus department. And we were so concerned about his welfare that, and we wanted to make sure we got it right because, you know, we felt he was the one that we could persuade to start the movement. We actually got signs and put them on his harvester shoot, you know, front, back, right way, wrong way, and a no entry for trailers. confusion again as to which side you're supposed to follow on the left side it's front back and even if you look at the back of the harvester we even give the trailer men directions it couldn't be clearer this side is the way to go We just can't get these English men and some Scotch men and a few Welsh men convinced that you have to fill your spout out to the left hand side. And my argument is, look at any combine. The argument that everybody has is, oh, your controls is all on your right hand side so it's so much easier to look out here. But a combine's controls are all on the right hand side, but yet with all every combine goes out here, so that means that's the right way, okay? Just think about that. Anyway, well, <laughs> Wilson's series of DVDs, I firmly believe, and I stand by this, put us on the professional map. And what I mean by that is companies were looking at these DVDs and going, that was very good. Harry Wilson came across really well, it was a great interview and it's fair to say that we were trying to get it out there that we could be the company that had the balance between the fun, the humour, the crack and the serious business of contracting. It's been a disaster here to be honest with you, it really, it really has, um, for farmers, for contractors in this area, we are, we are used to it wet, but we've had it horrendous. There's old farmers we speak to and they've never known anything like it, ever. So it's, I think we have endured one of the worst, the worst foraging years anyway. It's just never stopped. It was wet when we did Miscanthus, it was wet when we did first cut, second cut, third cuts were virtually non-existent. The whole crop was wet, maize is wet. If maize season stretches out a little bit longer, that'll be, we'll be chopping maize in December and quick break for Christmas and then start again in Miscanthus. So let's hope we don't get a dry Christmas day because we'll be chopping. Never was it in my intention ever to, to belittle agriculture, to bring it down, to make it look bad. We always want to raise it up, but we try to have a little bit of a laugh and a bit of fun. And I know, again from hindsight, in chatting to certain people, that yes, they prefer the two legends in a donkey style video that you've went out and bought something and done something and made something happen because it was funny, it was humorous. It was three tractors that we owned. We didn't really care about if something fell off, it was okay. 
and then you're turning it around to this series here where it's million dollar, million dollar, millions and millions of dollars, pounds, whatever way you want to look at it, doesn't it? Where it's the length and breadth of the UK and Ireland. This man was sending harvesters to South Africa to work for seasons. You're going from that and you're showing the world, you're saying, look, this is what we can do. And whilst it has moved a long way from then, I am very, very proud and I believe this series of DVDs let the world know, actually, we can be as professional as anybody wants us to be. It just depends what our decision is and what way we want to take it. And that's the beauty about it for us. We do our thing. We just hope people enjoy. But if you haven't seen these, I do recommend that you get a look at these. If you're serious about agriculture, we Harry, he's the boy. He's the boy. And Harry gave me a lot of very good, solid advice in business. Harry and I had fantastic conversations during all the time that we were over there and we still keep in touch. So, great man, great man. Well, do you see yourself retiring to a golf course in the near future? Uh, if there's a golf course and need mending, I'll go and mend it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not going to hang up the boiler suit any time soon, Harry? I hope I can keep going and doing what I love doing. In 1970, I dreamt of being a contractor. I'm still dreaming of being a contractor. When I was just a young boy, my daddy took me on his knee and said, son, you're growing up now, this is what you got to be. Keep my word and do as I say, and you'll make it through when all your skies turn gray. Is something that you should revere. Don't kick a man when he's down, cause you never know when your turn will come around because of you. I am the man I am today because you showed me the way. You taught me right from wrong because of you. Me the way you would 
Never be.